Hello friends of seblogapps.blogspot.com Today I'm gonna show you how to create a custom tiny web DB service to be used in App Inventor 2. In fact, with the MIT App Inventor 2 we can use the tiny web DB component that is a component that allows you to store the data in a database on the web. Because the data is stored on the web instead of the local phone, Tiny WebDB can be used to facilitate the communication between phones and apps between your user, for example for a multiplayer game or for a shared database. App Inventor provides with a default App Inventor custom tiny WebDB server located at this address. This is not a very good way to make a tiny WebDB service application because this is a public web service and can be changed or shut down at any time. So the best solution is to have your own copy of the service running on Google App Engine servers. First of all, we need to download App Engine for Python at this internet address. So we go to the cloud platform of Google and click on Downloads. Then we select Google App Engine SDK for Python and we select the platform that we are using. Currently, I'm showing you this tutorial on a Windows machine, so I will download the Google App Engine 1923 MSI installation package. Of course, uh, you can download the newer version when they will be available. Later on, we read uh, the instruction and we see that uh, for Windows, uh, there's the need for Python 2.7 release. If you don't have it already installed on your machine, you need to download it from the Python website. So we can go to the Python website and instead of downloading the 2.7.4 release, we can go to the download section and download the most recent release, but still on the 2.7 branch. Currently, when I'm recording this video, the most recent version is the 2.7.2 release and you save it in your local PC. Last bit of file that we need is the sample code from the MIT App Inventor. This one you can download it by clicking on the sample code at this page. Also this one save it in a safe place in your PC because we will need it for later. Then we start installing the files that we just downloaded and we start from Python. Python is a powerful language and is used by the existence of the Google App Engine. We can install it for all the users and I suggest you that you don't change the installation path so leave it to c .slash python 27 slash. Click next and accept the default option. After a few minutes Python will be installed. We click on finish and we test that Python is correctly installed installed by launching it from the icon. If you see the Python command prompt, you are ready to go. So we move to next step, which is to install the Google App Engine 1.923. Currently, it's another Windows installer, very basic. You can leave the default installation path and it tells that Python 2.7 is found, so all the prerequisites are available. We click next and we leave all the default option and and we install it. After a few minutes also the Google App Engine launcher will be installed on your local PC. We click on finish and we exit the App Engine installation. We have the custom tinydb web zip file. We extract everything on the same folder. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure that you remember the path where you extracted this file with the Python installation application for the custom tiny web DB service. We launch the Google App Engine launcher. You find it here or in your desktop as an icon. And we have the Google App Engine launcher interface. Uh, this is a warning uh, that there is a newer version. You can download it if you want. If not, you can simply ignore it. Uh, from file, uh, we select add existing application and we browse uh, to the directory where we just uh, downloaded uh, the App Inventor uh, the zip file. So it's App Inventor DB. If the port in your PC is already in use, the 8080 for some other service, you can change it here. 
On this PC it's free, so I leave it there, no need to change. You see that we have the new application on the App Engine launcher, but it's currently stopped. So I click on it and I click on Run and then Logs. I want to see that the application is running correctly. After a few seconds, we should see a message that says that the local console is running. When the console is running, this icon will turn green like we saw now. If we have Windows Firewall message, we can simply grant access to the Windows Firewall because this program is not a dangerous program. So now the application is running locally at this uh, internet address. I can read it by copy paste this address or simply clicking on browse on the App Engine launcher. This is the web interface for the TinyDB. It's a helper interface for the web database service where we can store a tag value pair in the database or we can search for tags. So for example, if I do like this, I write uh, test tag value 1 to 3 store value. You see when you reload the page that we stored in the database uh, this uh, tag. If we want to read it, uh, we need to just uh, specify the tag, get value, and uh, you see that the return value is uh, 1 to 3. If the tag is not existing, the return value is uh, empty. Keep this uh, in mind. This is just to check that our application is running fine without any problem. But now we want to deploy this application to the Google App Engine server. So the, the application will be available for every user that has access to internet. How we can do that? We click on the application and then click on dashboard. This will open the Google App Engine dashboard. If you are not logged in in your Google account, do it now and it will say that there is no such project. Okay, so we need to create a new project. Project. I have some other test project that I created in the past, maybe you will have empty list. I click on create project and I give a project name. So for example, Seblog Apps Tiny Web DB. You will see that uh, the project ID is uh, this one. It's created uh, at random by the Google uh, servers okay i will try okay with the db2 so i will have a meaningful uh, uh, name it's not really important but maybe it's uh, nicer i click on the create and uh, after a few seconds uh, the google server will create uh, this uh, application for me you see that the new application is created the name was not available like this because I put I did it in the past for another tutorial this is why I'm doing it now with the tiny web DB2 so now the application is ready but it's currently empty very important is to know your project ID. This project ID will be needed when customizing our application. So I take this name and I copy it to the clipboard, then go back to the Google App Engine launcher and click on edit. This will open the configuration file for the Python application app.yaml. Change the custom TinyWebDB27 to change the name of the application to the project ID that you have just created. Now you can save the file, close the editor, then stop the current application that was running on your local PC and we want to deploy this application to the Google server. So we click on the deploy icon and we look at the log file. Wait for a little bit and probably, okay, you see you need to uh, approve the Google App Engine FCFG application to uh, access uh, your data on the internet. So you click accept and it says that the authentication flow has completed. You can now wait and see that uh, the App Engine launcher is uploading our file, our Python application from the MIT to the Google servers. After a few seconds uh, you see that uh, it says that it exits with uh, no error code and you can close uh, this uh, window. So in the Google 
uh, App Engine Launcher, we deployed the application. To check that the application is running, we click on Compute App Engine Dashboard and we should see a summary with the request from our application. Actually, there were no requests, so nothing is shown. This is the address for our web service. We can click on this address and you have to remember it for your application and we should see exactly the same interface, web interface that we shown before, but this time the data is stored on the internet. So if I select something different and I store new tags, for example, with different values, you see that this value pair will be available to all the people that have access to internet and this will be the address of the uh, service okay so blog apps tiny web db2 dot spot dot com this in this specific case of course in your case you should change it to your name of your web database server you can try and see if you can get the values for example let's try to read the value of test tag 2 it's 1 to 3 and if you want to check on the App Engine dashboard, you, sh you see that now we have some request. And if you want to see all the data, you go to Cloud Data Store Query and you see the indexes that we stored, okay, the two tag that we have stored currently. If we have more, of course, we will have more also here. From here, we can also delete the tags. So far, everything is working wonderfully. We have now to see how to use this tiny web DB on the App Inventor. It's very easy. I go to MIT App Inventor and I show you simple application that I did to check the service. Okay, so I'm loading the project. The project is very simple and it contains just a few buttons. One button to store a tag value pair and one button to get the tag value. You have, of course, to change the tiny web DB component service URL properties to the IP address of your running application on the Google App Engine. So I can copy this service URL. I can delete the one that is existing here and put my new address. In the blocks editor, I can show you that it's a very simple code. Basically, when a user click on the store, we call the tiny web DB method. Tiny web DB is a very simple component that can get value or store value. Uh, so it's a storing a value with the tag entered by the user at, on the text box tag text and the value to store is what the user has inserted in the value text. After the store is performed by the application, the event value store is generated. So we show with the notifier a message confirming that the value was stored correctly. When we push on the get button, we simply call the method get value uh, with the tag entered by the user. After this method is performed, the event got value is generated and we set the label of the tiny web DB with a text that is a join that read the tag from the tag from web DB that was just read by the component and is value. When I initialize the screen, I simply uh, uh, show what is the service URL for the tiny web DB that we are using. Now to test my application, I can connect the IE companion to my actual phone that I'm using for the development. I'm scanning the QR code as usual and after a few seconds we see the application running on the phone. Okay, this is very simple interface and you see that the database that I'm using is the one that we just created, Seblog Apps, Tiny Web DB2, AppSpot.com. So we can try to store a new tag with a new value. For example, uh, let's uh, say example and the value to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and click on store. You see the notifier says that uh, the value was stored correctly. And if I reload my page, I see the new key, okay, the new key with the new value. 
if I want to read one of the existing value, for example, a test tag, let's try it in our application. So I simply write it here, test. You have, of course, to remember all the capital letters correctly, tag and get, and you see that it gets the value of tau. Of course, the value is not limited to one single a string, but it can be an array of values, a list of values, a JSON object, XML object. So actually, it makes your application able to communicate with a very powerful database that is stored in the cloud. So all the people that are going to use your application are accessing the same database. And this can be useful for a lot of application. Feel free to continue to try and to test the application. You can uh, use uh, my sample, uh, sample application that I created here, no problem. And uh, I suggest that you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to follow me and uh, you teach and learn new and interesting feature of MIT App Inventor 2 software. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye.